You have heard about AI applications that people use large language models to build, but there is more than large language models in building an AI application. You need to build a retrieval augmented generation, then probably you're going to talk about embeddings. You're going to talk about a vector DB to store those embeddings. Then you need certain nuances. Sometimes you need to expose them as an API. But what if I told you that you have one application, one Python library that can do all these for you in one probably I shouldn't say one command, but in a bunch of Python code. And that's exactly what we're going to discuss in this video. We're going to discuss about a new Python library called auto LLM. It's not an automatic LLM and unlike auto ML, you still have to do a bunch of coding yourself, but this one library can offer you a lot of things together, package together, because it abstracts over a lot of details, but also gives you the flexibility to play with certain things. So with one library auto LLM, you can build a retrieval augmented generation application using a large language model. In fact, like a lot of large language models and expose it as an API for you, anybody to use it. And everything is possible because of this one new open source library. Let's get into the video to understand how to do it. First of all, I would like to do, show you a quick demo. I have a Gradio simple Gradio application. So the rag that we are doing, retrieval augmented generation we are doing is for the very popular open source project called Open Interpreter. So Open Interpreter is this library. So we are going to ask questions about Open Interpreter. So I went ahead and asked a question how to install Open Interpreter. So it went and gave me the answer for Windows, for Mac, for everything. So the total prompt usage is 2080, 2,843. The prompt completion token is 487 tokens. The overall cost is this. As a start, uh, I want you to understand that this currently works with OpenAI API key. I think it supports also Azure and a couple of other uh, proprietary LLMs. I'm not very sure how to make this work with uh, something like Hugging Face models yet, uh, but um, I think this is a very promising start and given that this is an open source library, I assume that the developers would make it easier for us to use these pro, um, open source LLMs, not just the proprietary LLMs. But right now this demo is using OpenAI. So as you can see, this works completely fine. So let me stop my Gradio application and show you step by step code of how to do that. Before we look into the code, let's go here and then look at the library in itself. This library is called Auto LLM. Automatically create LLM apps in seconds. Um, It's a bit of an oversell. But the good thing here is that why Auto LLM? simplify, unify, amplify. I think they've done a lot of good work in copywriting. So the, when you compare this chart uh, or the table, you've got auto LLM, lang chain, llama index, light LLM. Now from the outside, you would see that auto LLM is necessarily competing with llama index and light LLM, which could be partially true. So you don't have to use llama index if you use auto LLM, but the truth is hidden somewhere in the requirements or TXT. Auto LLM, in fact, Behind the scenes, use Llama index, a light LLM, lands DB for vector DB by default and fast API to create the API. So it doesn't mean that you are necessarily competing with it. It's just that you are not going to explicitly use it, but implicitly, ultimately you're using Llama index and light LLM. I just wanted to put this out. Um, this is like, you know, the NumPy versus Pandas uh, discussion when using Pandas, you're not using NumPy explicitly, but Pandas in implicitly uses NumPy. Anyways, the feature. Do you get support for 100 plus LLMs? Okay, auto LLM does it. That's what they're saying. Um, because light LLM offers you that. Unified API, light LLM offers you that. 20 plus vector databases, Llama index offers you that. So auto LLM offers it through Llama index. Cost calculation, light LLM offers that. So Llama index, sorry, auto LLM offers through light LLM. One line rag LLM engine. So in one line, can you create like a rag CLI engine? Auto LLM does it, one line fast API, Auto LLM does it because it uses fast API to give you the API access. All you have to do is install pip, install Auto LLM and you have everything ready. Um, one line query engine or one second query engine, that's what I'm saying, in seconds. And uh, how to do it in fast API, this is also in couple of um, lines. If you see the API, it's quite simple from auto LLM input auto query engine from auto query engine, you specify the documents that you want to process. Once you have the documents, then you just use the query engine to query and get the response and show the response. And it can also show you the cost. And uh, if you want to 
have a fast api then all you have to do is auto fast api dot from query engine and then do query engine like you just do a very small change and you have an api exposed what are the llms it supports it says 100 plus llms primarily because of the light llm support microsoft azure google vertex ai aws bedrock you can see these are this and some uh, vector db's llm uh, cost cal calculation so let's go ahead and uh, see the google collab notebook that the team had put on the github repository pip install auto llm that is the main thing you want gradio because we wanted to create a front-end ui application git python nb convert these are supporting libraries once we have that now you have to import the required functions and classes from auto llm import auto query engine that is the the most important thing auto llm utils document reading import read github repo as documents import read files as documents so basically what we are going to do in this video is we're going to directly read the documents directly from the github repository but you can also do it locally that's where you use read as files as documents and os.n1 um, and set up the open api key as an environment variable that by default uses gpt 3.5 turbo model that's what I was um, actually checking here. So you can go here and then see that it by default uses GPT 3.5 model. And um, once you have that ready, then uh, you have to specify the Git repo URL from which you want to do the document ingestion or create embedding. Then inside that folder, inside the document or GitHub repository, where is that folder? So for example, if you go to this particular repository from open interpreter, you can go here and then see, okay, that the relative file folder path is docs. So basically you're trying to look into docs and what do you have the file format as you have the markdown files dot MD files. So what we have to say here is that we have to say, okay, the relative folder path is docs, the required extensions that you are specifically looking at is dot MD. I think this is quite helpful so that, you know, you don't read a bunch of documents that you don't have to. So you reduce the computation time, you reduce the cost as well. The next thing is you have to use read underscore github underscore repo underscore documents specify the github url specify the relative folder path then specify the required extensions and a temporary folder a directory called auto llm temp is created if you want to read it locally then you can use the second one that we imported read files as documents and specify the local folder and then specify the extensions. so that way you can do it locally without having to read from github depending upon what you basically want to do and once you are done with reading the file part so here you have just specified the documents and the documents are being read the next thing is you need to set up the a query engine so the query engine equals auto query engine from parameters document parameters so this is where actually the ingestion happens the embeddings are created so as you can see the parsing documents into nodes generating embeddings depending upon the size of the md files that you have got number of tokens that you have got number of files that you have got the kind of llms that you are using it will take its own time so in my case it took lesser time less than probably a um, few seconds uh, primarily because i had like as you can see here only like four or five documents one two three four we have like only four documents so it it works pretty easily um, because i have lesser documents if you want advanced usage, then you can configure the auto query engine. Um, if you want like basic, you can skip the advanced. But if you want advanced usage, you can specify the system prompt. You can specify the, the, the prompt structure also. You can enable cost calculator. You can specify the model. You can, by default, it uses Lance DB vector store, but you can also specify all the other details. The vector DB or the embedding details, the chunk size, the query engine parameters. Um, again. It, this is all the things that you can play with to reduce the computation time and reduce the cost. Then you have to specify the LLM parameters, which is based on this. You're going to specify LLM parameters, vector store parameters, the service context parameters, query engine parameters, and then create the query engine. So this is almost same like this. This is the replacement of this. Either you can use this, which uses default settings, or you can do all these things and use this that will use an advanced setting, whatever you have got. The next thing is ask anything to your documents. So all you have to do is now go ask questions. For example, response equal to, I said, okay, how to set it up on GPU. I didn't even specify what it is. That's where RAG plays an important role because it knows that because this is open interpreter documentation. So we are specifically talking about open interpreter. But if you have got multiple documents, let's say two, three uh, folders 
or two, three different types, then you need to be more specific in query what you're asking. That is where it says, okay, the total number of tokens that it has got is 2,845 tokens. The, the completion token takes 687 tokens and the total token cost is this. And then the response is this, okay, to set up open interpreter on a GPU, do all these things for Linux, for Windows, for Mac OS. And you know, you can, you can just go here and then see. The next thing is you can run this as a Gradio application and the Gradio application is um, very simple, import Gradio as GR and you need uh, the specified core function and the core function is also because we have got the query engine, you can use query engine then send the query, get the response and display the response and that's how you can have your fully functional RAG powered by LLM, uh, in this case OpenAI with a GUI graphical user interface just like this. It's uh, quite mind blowing to be honest that all these could be done in uh, just a couple of lines of Python code thanks to auto LLM. Now, if you are interested, uh, then what you can do is you can go here and explore further more what kind of files that are supported or the folders that are supported or the data sources type that are supported. So if you were to do that, go to Llama index and then look at Llama index library and then see what are all supported, then you can probably easily use those things within this. Just because we are seeing a live demo, I would like to quickly, very quickly show you a demo. So I'm going to go here first. Let's go to this docs here, docs. And um, I want to just ask Mac OS. Okay. Let me just simply ask what is, how to do it in safe mode. Okay. Let's ask this question. How to install an open interpreter in safe mode. Okay. We have asked the query. Now it's going to take a time and uh, that the time is again based on a lot of things like your, the input prompt, the output prompt that it has to generate. Uh, so output is 97, input is 2845 or the total prompt usage. And it is, okay, it says to install open interpreter in safe mode, it just, just gives you. So as you can see, even though this document um, is quite a bit bigger document. So you can see that it has safe mode features, enabling safe mode, a lot of things. It's not just simply using pattern matching and then getting it to you and giving it to you. Rather, it's making sure that okay, you ask the question how to install it in safe mode. And at that point, it knows that, okay, safe mode, probably the answer is complete. So it gives you that limited answer. So you can see on the after the following these steps. And it also helps you in giving the markdown as it is because it's reading markdowns, which could be helpful if you're generating a GUI, like graphical user interface where you can parse this and show the code to the user. I think it has got really good value. And uh, this is um, this is a very new project to be honest. Like uh, I just very recently came across, you can see the last commit 19 hours before, and this project is being actively developed. So I don't even see a lot of issues. So I guess like the developers would strongly appreciate more feedback. If you have got more feature requests, I think they would appreciate given that it's a very new project. Anyways, I'm, uh, I'm happy that this project exists. It's from a company called safevideo.ai. And uh, this is one single Python library that can help you build a retrieval augmented generation engine, uh, either as a CLI or as a fast API application where you can expose it as an API, all these things with just one, one Python library. I'm quite excited to see this, how this project goes forward, given that this is a wrapper around light LLM and Llama index. Let me know in the comment section, what do you feel about this, this particular project and also the video. See you in another video. Happy prompting.